Alright. Just make sure this is actually connecting. Um. Okay, it looks like it's going through. I don't even have chat open. Now open up the chat. All my chat messages. I'm gonna actually go on Yo, it has been a while. Let's go with the ping to go through if that's even working still. I'm just gonna see if it goes through. Side by side. Yeah, so for YouTube, people watching off the YouTube video, I'm gonna be scripting combat and abilities. For everyone else that's joining in the stream eventually. Uh, yeah, same thing. I'm just gonna start with combat and then I'll introduce uh, abilities, visual effects, and we're gonna script all of that. And do uh, animations, because I don't have any. So that's what this stream's about and the videos coming up later and also i have to thank our uh, yuzu a vfx artist in roblox for giving me some shit we can have a look at see how yuzu does it don't know if yuzu wants me to show the code or not but i probably won't i'll take the code off the screen um but i just mainly need the vfx itself i'll code my own custom version of it and this is learning content as well so that's what's going to happen. So, um, what am I going to start with? We're going to do combat first. Client server, hitbox, all that jazz. So I'm going to start with the combat side on the client. Also, let me move these. I need to unpack this temporary folder here. Right here. I had a bunch of stuff there that I was going to use. Oh, I didn't move them in there. So these are just empty right now. Um, but what I also will do is enable extensions, which I forgot to do. Carry about half the extensions. These ones. Oops. Yes, code lower. Um, yeah. What we'll start with is user input, and then we'll have a look how we'll communicate to the server. And we'll do character states and all of that. So if I go references here, we've got a bunch of stuff here, but this is what we're going to do for the melee combat. So we'll have block, block break, punching, kicking, and dashing. So there is basic movements there. Um... I do want to introduce weapon combat as well, but we'll do that after the magic abilities. So we can have weapons and then specific weapon moves as well. Um, but yeah, for now we'll just do the melee combat uh, stuff. So to start, I'm going to do user input. I do want to make this uh, all platform support. So I'm going to use context action service. And I have a module, well actually let me zoom in a little bit. And I have a module for um, checking what platform they're on, so we'll use that as well. 
So here we'll do context action service. In our start on the bind action, we'll call this combat um, trigger. And have a function. So this function will handle the input for this bind action. Uh, for now, we're not going to create a mobile button. And here we'll just have enum user input type. So I'm just going to do um, left clicking first, which is mouse button one. We'll have action name, input state, input object. And actually, I might just do function module handle action input input state input objects. Could I do that? Um, yes, if I do it this way, actually. So if action name is equal to combat trigger. So make sure these actions are the same. Then return this with the input state input object and then here we'll just do a normal pass uh, context action result pass so that means go to the next binded key bind instead of syncing it here and stopping it from con continuing forward and then this one here is saying okay go up to this function and see what this one returns which for now we'll just do pass so here we want um uh, mouse, we want touch, and we want gamepad. And then gamepad's also PS4, Xbox, controller. I shall do controller, PS4, and Xbox. Touch is mobile, touch screen, mouse is mouse and keyboard. Okay. Um, now we've got that. So if I actually just go and have a look here, let's grab our. So in some of the utility here, I have a platform. This will return if they're on console, if they're on mobile, or if they're on desktop. So what I'm gonna do is simply get this, and then depending on which one it is, it will set up a certain bind here. So here I'm gonna have our key codes. Actually, we'll do key codes desktop. Key codes, no, actually that's probably not good. Let's do it this way, function module setup desktop. Binds. So we'll set up desktop binds, we'll set up console binds, and we'll set up our mobile binds. And then what we can actually also do is have a release binds. So now we're setting up modularity, so we can have it so if they switch platform mid-game, so like they enable touchscreen and then we use touchscreen, we can force it to be mobile binds, which would be touchscreen. And then we'll move this one here to the desktop binds. And here we have desktop key binds. We'll make a table with that one in there. Because we need blocking as well, so we'll need mouse button two. And then other key binds like Q for dashing. And then we'll unpack the key binds in there. So one here, setting up desktop key binds. One here, uh, setting up console keybinds and we'll set up mobile keybinds in here or actually mobile buttons and then we can say here if platform utility get platform, platform if platform is equal to desktop then module set up desktop binds else if platform is our console then module set up console binds also platform is it to is it touch or mobile 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 then module to set up mobile so we'll set up all of them we can refer to this in local modules local modules 
the local modules is this folder here local modules utility platform and that will access it that way um, okay so we'll do combat trick let's actually do a move set um bind and we'll do that and then up here we'll print input state dot name input object key code is equal to enum dot key code unknown so if it's a user input type so left click uh scroll wheel this key code will be unknown so we can just check that and if that's unknown, we know it's a user input type. So then we'll print the user input type name. Otherwise, if it is not unknown, it's a key code. And then we can just print the key code in. So we'll get that little operation there. Uh, let's say enum.user input state. That's a input object. Okay, if we play here, so if I left click, right click, nothing is there. Hopefully a storage rate for child assets, let's do that. And I'm going to need a screen GUI called interface in here, because of how I've set it up. That little one, is why is this? There we go, so we've got begin mouse button one and mouse button one. So now we've got the start and release of mouse buttons. And then what we can also do is have a function module yield until uh what is this? Yield until release key code or input type. Oh, actually, I can do input value, which is key code, enum the key code, or enum the user input type. I'll keep that the same. So this will be yield until the target. Did I not disable Discord sounds? Oops. Oh, let me just do that. Real quick. I'm streaming in Discord as well. Would you find it again? Ah, oh, fuck, I'll just mute this one. Oh, you mix, uh, mute, mute. But yeah, um, we'll yield until that target key is released. And then up here we'll have held key values while input value do cast away. And then here we'll say um, local input value equals, if that's unknown, that one, that one. So we actually need that in a variable now. We'll just do dot name there. Oh, we can fix this print statement. There we are. And then we can say held key values is input does not equal to begin well actually let's do if it's begin or nil so only when we begin holding it will we keep it here but if it does any other input state like stopping it cancelling changed it will just get rid of it because we only want when you hold it not when it changes And then here we can process all the um, different items. So that's already part of the combat system done. What we just need to do is request to the server, say, hey, can we punch? If the server says yes, we punch. And oh, looks like a 
Steve did something wrong. So I'll just click combat planes. Oh, wacky, 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 wacky. What is that? Let's read that. Weird. That is not doing anything. Also, I kept the appropriate data. I don't need. Um. Uh, input update. Let's actually swap this around so we can say, okay, spacebar has begun, or spacebar has ended. Wait, more sense that way. There we go. So left click begin, left click end, right click begin, right click end. And then we can also do, uh, if we go back here, desktop keybinds, we've also got enum.keycode.q and WSD movement Q2 dash um, spacebars jump. Do we want a double jump? No, I want a double jump. Is that red? Why are you red? What? Whatever. Oh, it's a color printer piece. I have an extension for that. So we begin and and we want to request to the server whether we can punch or not. So here we'll set up a bindable function. Now I have a framework set up. Would I need to use that? I would not. Actually, I don't even need to. Work that. Let's create a bindable function. Um. Yeah. Let's do remote. I'm actually going to grab my remote service from the RPG series real quick because I don't need my other module for this. Um. Oh shit, can I even access it? I don't think I can access. I can't. Oh, maybe this has it. Not even. All right, we'll just create a remote event then. We won't worry about this. Do video stuff. So we have our combat invoke uh, event or combat invoke function. Combat function. Yeah, combat function. We'll do a instance dot new uh, remote function. Name is combat function dot parent storage. And then we'll have down here on server invoke equals module on server invoke. And I'm putting this in the wrong spot. Let's go back here. Let's jump to the server side. Put that here. Function module on server invoke. We'll have our player and we'll have an argument like that. While we're here, we can actually get started on what's this one? Oh, a whole bunch of shenanigans. Yeah. Um, let's do. On server invoke, if number of args is equal to zero, then it's turn false, no argument provided. We'll have a boolean thing going on here. 
uh, we'll have a... I don't know if it's still under guide clause, but essentially you return a boolean whether or not it succeeded, and then a message, or error message. So if it's false, this is an error message. If it's true, it's a debug message. But essentially, we want to invoke the server, making a request. So let's do combat remote lua module return module module dot uh, module dot remote enums. Let's go remote enums. We'll do is oh. Can character attack or can attack equals R1. We'll say, okay, this finds it, so we're checking to see if our player's character can attack. And then what I can do up here is say function module can character attack character. So we're doing it this way so we can add NPC support as well. So we can say can this NPC attack. Ah, uh, that probably should actually be in a module anyway. Uh, I think that's actually, yeah, yeah. Um, that would be. Oh, we need on it. In character, we'll just keep the in character attack function module. Actually, we'll just do that character attack so we'll do if character states and a bunch of bullish once we get there so if args one so this is what the play is passing to the remote uh, if not uh, combat remote invoke server let's just do Replace storage, wait for child, combat function. So we want this one on the clients. We come up here to replace storage. So we do look at success or can attack error message equals invoke server. Let's add function. So if can attack is equal to false, then turn. And we'll actually do a warn here for the moment. Cannot attack. Our character is not able to attack. Two string error message. Let's call that message. So when we invoke server, we'll pass in that combat remote. Combat remote, combat enums, combat config. We do combat config, it will encapsulate everything. So here we'll do combat config module, put modules, data, combat config. Let's get on this, let's get down on the server side as well. So we can say uh, if args1 is equal to the Combat config dot remote enums. Hey, bear works. So here we'll say if our job is that. Oh, let's do job enum args one. And actually, he'll return false unknown. Unknown remote unknown program class. Oh, why is it not yeah. So if it is can attack return like player dot character we'll check if that character can attack. So here we'll just return true.
Invoke server when our combat config module and we're enums. Uh, can attack. So this value here, this can attack, will give us one. So this number one will represent this can attack job. And then we can just check on the server if that job enum is a can attack value. We'll check for that. Um, so that works there. Actually, let's do um, attempt combat attack or attempt attack or attempt punch. Oh, let's do attempt attack. So let's actually swap that to attempt attack. So here we'll say can attack is false, otherwise we'll pass it there, we'll sync it here. So this is one character is now attacking. When we return here, so that's no arguments provided. Um, can character attack function module start character attack character function module end character attack character. So we want these functions so we can say, okay, start this, allow this character to attack. So any incoming values for an attack is valid. And then this one here is to stop and disallow the uh, target character from attacking. And that, in that case, it would be when the attack ends, when the character's stunned, if something happens to the character, we'll run this. So like if the character dies, we'd run this as well. So this would prevent any combat from going through. And I did Windows eBind, I think. No, I did not, okay. Everything apparently. Why does Windows have key binds you can't disable? Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. But yeah. Um. So what we'll do is when we attempt to attack, we'll say if not attack. Oh, actually, actually we're not functioning it. Uh, attempt character attack. We want the character so then that way we just pass this off here return false oh, actually let's do a little can attack message <coughs> say if not can attack return that and instead of this we give it that say return attempt character attack there so attempt attack can this character attack if it's false return that otherwise start the attack return true and actually we can defer that Um, actually we should probably do spawn here. But there we go. Um, so here we'll say, okay, is the character currently attacking? If so, has it expired? Uh, is the character stunned? Is the character dead? Let's actually move that one to the top. And this one, because they're quick ones to check. Um, and yeah, so here we'll just do level humanoid. Character fine, first child, which is a humanoid. If not humanoid or humanoid health is more like to zero, then return false. 
um, humanoid is dead or non-existent. So is the character dead? Is the character stunned? So this one's character states will come back to that there. Is the character currently attacking? So has it expired? Is the character already attacking? Simplify them. Um, yeah, we won't need them, we'll need them up there. And then... How do I want to do this? Maybe something like that. So that's how I'll combat duration there. I might do something else than this. Leave that there for now, but here we can say okay, we have attempted to attack. If we cannot attack, return false, otherwise, return true because we have started to attack. We are now attacking. My character is now attacking. So, here we'll say, uh, is attacking. If his attacking is false, character is not able to attack. Um, and then here we say character is now attacking. Uh, animation. Animation, sounds, hitbox, which we'll do next. Okay. Oh, here we want to say, um, so can character attack, you want to say if it is, if they are already attacking, if, uh, character, oh, let's do, uh, yeah, I need this character state module, let me grab it, local, uh, character states module, is repair modules, services, character states, so essentially I can uh, so I can give it a state, so we st set state, I can give it a temporary state, I can get those temporary and given states, I can also get every state, and I can do an event or callback when that state changes, and that's a event which I can connect to. What I'm going to do is say if uh, character states module, uh, get temporary state, uh, character, I want to get the state name, is attacking, return true, character is currently attacking, so here we're going to say, okay, check if the character is attacking, For this one, this would be false because we would have a check up here. Is character attacking? If so, return true. Oh, uh, is that right? No, no, no. That's not right. Not here at least. So can character attack? We need to check if the character is attacking. If the character is attacking, we don't want to allow another attack to spawn. We want to... We want to wait for this one to end. Um, also, that one just needs to be down there. And then here we'll just do... Here's the character stuns. Actually, maybe I'll do that one afterwards. That might be better. 
uh, is uh, stunned attacking. So if not attack, then we'll start attacking. So for attacking, we want to set this temporary one. Uh, for attack duration. So let's do that because we need to attacking duration, attack duration. So we start attack, we want attack duration. Oh wait, that's not right. Attack duration. Mm. Can character attack, if they're attacking return false, if they're stunned return false. This is where we're doing it here. So let me actually move this up here again. So don't pass that there, but we'll put put it here just so we can have a look at it later. So we'll set the temporary state for an amount of time, which would be the attack duration. like that. So now we can actually watch on the character when this changes. So what we'll do is test it. So actually let's do a quick test to make sure it's not erroring. Uh, create. Yes, yeah, so that's that connected. Is that at um Can that remove? There's storage modules module. Oh, I had it set up here. Okay. Well, I guess I do need the Arnet bridge then. Let me put that back. And now that should be. Not here. Restore. Back in. I don't know why that didn't restore the first time. Uh, and actually, I can move this back. Uh, damage indicator back to our core. Get attribute of table, line 37. The character's a table. Attempt character attacking, local player character. I used colon, didn't I? Yep. I've changed them all to dots. I forgot all about that. Like that. Wait for child, line five. Wait for child, assets. Wait for 40 now. Assets. And I need to get the damage indicator. One second. Wait, is damage indicator. I mean, just grab it from this other game. Hey, get some. Where is this at? Okay. Let's get this in there. Damage indicator. Index nil. Line five of server. What skill are you working on? Uh, I I just started it, but we're doing combat. So here we can see now attacking. But what I want to do is 
I want to have it return. So here we invoke attack state. Attack state is equal to one and that. Or state is equal to two and character is. Oh, wait, no, we do want that actually. Yeah. Fine as is. Let me do that. We don't have a debounce. Let's add a debounce. Um, I'll use this character states thing as well. So attempt attacking can character attack. So here we'll say um, is the character on attack fall down if. Get state temporary attack cooldown and return false. The character is currently cooldown. And I think I answered your question properly, but we're just doing like basically the entire combat uh, back end from the ground up. And right now I'm just doing left click attack and then I'll be doing right click to block and then block break after that. Attack cooldown. Uh, let's do like call attack interval. Let's do attack interval plus the attack duration. I think that should be right. left click now attacking um let's just do that character is now attacking let me just get rid of this real quick oh, actually let me do this. Only print if it's left click. Oh, actually, I didn't even do the thing correctly. So here we're going to handle action input, but here we want to say attempt uh, mouse button one. So here we'll say if it is mouse button one or um, action mouse button one input state or action let, uh, what would it be MB1? Oh, I guess I could just call it that. Mouse button one. If it is mouse button one, pass in the input state. Uh, melee attack. Attempt melee attack. That's probably what I want to call it. Input state. Hey, Koa. Yeah, I'm alive. I just didn't stream at all. <laughs> Yeah, I've been good. I've been coding heaps in Python. A tiny bit in Roblox, but I just haven't been feeling Roblox. Might close the client. So here we're going to attempt melee combat, which is the this stuff here that we want. Um, so actually we want to return here. But here is where we want this. Let's put this print back up here. Um. Hmm. <laughs> is it new or based on your game? Oh, this is just from the ground up. I do have references here, but I haven't looked at any yet. I'm just doing it from my memory.
return enum context action result dot pass so nothing happened but this one is where we want melee attack to occur and yeah I guess this is Yeah, I guess this is fine. Uh, input value. Actually, let me pass these in. Input value enum the key code of enum the user input type. I do want to add a feature. Attempt. And I want input value. Uh, let's see. Any tips on how to make frameworks? or a framework more exploit proof um generally it's just a remote that you have to worry about remotes and character physics so if you do character state checking properly so like for example my combat system i have to do these uh states here to check whether or not the character can attack and i'm doing that on the server so the player cannot edit any of this um yeah it's just you can't really do much about auto farming you can't really do much about um because they just take advantage of firing their remotes normally and moving the character through like pathfinding or teleporting yeah yeah essentially you just yeah as Koa said you don't trust a clone it's a you sanitize everything yeah exactly yeah Yeah, so if you if your remote says fire server um this target humanoid on the server you have to be doing checks to check whether or not that humanoid is within distance like attacking distance and whether or not the character is actually attacking or that player's character is actually attacking which is what i'm going to add in mine so this here this character states thing when i receive a remote input saying that this character attacked another character i will say get temporary state that uh, source character, so the one that's attacking, and I'll check if they are attacking or not. And if they're not attacking, it's either they're exploiting or there's a slight delay in remote activity. Which obviously in this attack duration, you can do like plus ping duration, but then that's exploitable. So you need a, you need a max of like, oh, sorry, that's a min. You need a max of like 0 0.3 delay extra and that's the limit. Something like that. But, yeah. Just depends on how you implement it. Um. So here, we'll attempt melee attack. We'll check if we can attack. And then what I'm going to do, actually, is... Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what you do. All you do is module dot yield until release the input value. And I'm going to put task dot wait. Uh, in this case, we don't really have the uh, thing here for it. So I'm just going to manually put them here. Plus attack duration. And I'm just going to say. Um. Ah, I need to move this to the client now. Let's do that. That's server storage, but I want one in here. So let's do combat service. And what I'm going to have in here is check for both the client and the server. So here I'm going to do this check here. I'm going to put in the combat service. Fire script or parent, wait for a child, character states. And then I can call this on the client and server, so they both are checking the same thing. Module can character attack, so that would be combat, uh, combat shared can attack.
On the only problem in my combat system are the remoras. Yeah, that's what I do. Check distance between enemies. But you can trust variables that are set inside local scripts. I mean, if you do your checks on the server, it doesn't matter what the client does to your local scripts. Because you'll be checking to make sure that they can do things. Certain things on the server. Uh, also, let me do combat shared module. Okay, modules, services, combat shared. So let me change this to combat server. I don't know what to call this one. Let me move that into combat server. So you see, I already have it here. Set state temporary stunned. And knocked it down. Except it's not on that one yet. Combat shared. Combat server. Combat client. And you can see we've got this trio going. And actually this combat config. This remote enum should be in this one. Because that should be purely combat config. So let's change that. Combat shared module. Let's replace that. Combat server. This config module. Oh, I need the combat shared on the server. And press spots. And in a local script, also check the player's memory usage and do anti hook functions. Sure, why not? Shared. So we don't need the config at the moment, we just want to focus on these. Oh, actually, let's grab the config for a minute. So you like it, because combat duration, or uh, attack duration, and attack interval. And then what I can say is attempt attack. Attack duration is the combat config module. Attack duration. And attack interval. Like that. So if I do. Server, get rid of these. These pieces here. Attack duration. Attack duration. Attack interval. That's. We can have something going. I don't actually think I need these at the moment. Let me get rid of them. Because what I'm going to use is actually this here. I'm going to let the player tell us what they've been attacking. And then what I can also do is come up here. Let's do a combat event. Our remote event. Actually, here we're going to use our unreliable remote event. Uh, combat unreliable. Now that we actually have these, combat. Our dot parent equals up the storage. So unreliable. Unreliable remote event essentially means that if the player sends something over the remote, it doesn't care whether or not it makes it to the server or not. So in our case, we don't care whether or not the player's um, actual hit gets to the server because they might have lagged out or something. We don't care about that. That's their problem. We just won't register the hit. 
And by doing it this way, instead of having 100% um, connectivity, it's actually a lot more performant. But of course, for our combat function to tell the player whether or not we can attack, we definitely do want this to be a remote function that returns something. Hey, oh, hey, Libya, what's up? Uh, so here we'll do on server event connect module on server event. Let's do a function on server event. We've got our local player, get the dot. That's our args. Let's paste that. Uh, in on there, return. I actually don't even need to return. If job enum is equal to um, register hits, then uh, let's move up here. Function module pass combat uh, hits, I guess. Local player humanoids. Should I do humanoids? I might do characters. Uh, I get characters. Uh, and then I can unpack arms. So here I can see if type of target characters not if the table then return false target characters is an invalid type. Uh, return true parse all combat hits. Something like that. Oh, actually, we don't even need, we don't even return anything anyway, so that doesn't matter. Um... Yeah. What we'll do is come here, so the character is now attacking. Um, what I want to do is have it, so when you hold left click, it's going to keep auto attacking. So that's what I want to do with this. So if I do that... So let's move that. Let's put that in a function actually. Function module. Um... Let's change this to success, it's false. Uh, let's do, if not combat shared module, can character attack local player the character, then return. Uh, enum context action result pass. We'll pass that print could not attack character is unavailable. And then here we'll say while yield until release that key code value. We're gonna see if we can attack. So if we can attack, we'll request to the server. Do whatever. So actually here we can do function module run combat attack or run melee attack. We'll move all of these in here. We really need that there. Now let's do this. Um, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. If not, return run melee attack every blah. So actually we want to spawn this. That's what we want to do. Spawn that in a new thread. We want to sync this one. And then every time you left click, it will check this. Could not attack. Character is unavailable.
Well, um, yield until release, run the melee attack, wait the duration. We'll try run the melee attack again. Here we'll do if not can attack return. Let's return early. We'll request the server. If not success, we'll return early. Character oh, server said character cannot attack. Server said you cannot attack. Put a two string message. Return there. Otherwise, yeah. And then we'll do our stuff here. Fire server. Uh, combat. What we call this again? Combat unreliable events. By server. Hit characters. So then what we can actually do is share some functions now. We can do function module um, get characters from hits. So we'll pass in our hits, which is a table base part. And we'll turn a table of model. So here we'll do four. So here we'll do for each base part. Humanoid, base part of parent, on first child, which is a humanoid. If not humanoid, then continue. So no humanoid there. Ah, uh, here this is a team of characters. Ah, uh, and then two of so characters, base part of parent. Oh, you fucked the internet. Oh, okay, it looks like streams back. My mom's playing around with the internet, which is great. Uh, essentially, we're just checking the character. Uh, checking the character for the humanoid. If there is a humanoid with parent, we'll, we'll add the parent of the base part to this table here. And then here we'll do the function on filter bad characters. Characters. We'll do uh, local index if it's one, while index is more than two number of characters. Do we'll do humanoid. There's characters at the index. And that find first child, which is our humanoid. So this here is on the client side, so we're going to get a hitbox uh, result. So it's going to give us a bunch of base parts. We're gonna find characters using that. And then um, what we're gonna do with those is give it to the server, and then the server is gonna filter the bad ones out of them. And then you know, we'll do uh, go through each character, check if the character exists, and there's a humanoid. If humanoid and humanoid.health is larger than zero. Actually, we're going to flip the statement. We're going to say, well, actually, we can just keep it like that. Index plus equals one. So we'll just increment. We'll say this character is fine. We'll increment that. Else, table remove characters at the index. Like that. And that will mutate this one here. Remove dead characters. Filter dead characters. Attempt attack, and then we also need this other uh, one here, register hit. So let me put that in here as 11. Uh, 
Um, character's now attacking. What I'm going to do here is... Let's add a dummy to the game real quick. Oh my god, let's go point five. There we go. And we've got a bunch of these characters. I actually go in game. So if I left click, you can see that there. It doesn't seem to be doing anything, so let's have a look. Comment client. Uh, if not, print cannot attack. Client side checked. Okay, fail to pass. Server so said you cannot attack. So this one here is failing, so let's have a look. Can character attack? Can character attack character. Let's actually also go here if not character then return false invalid character was passed. If not character or not character parent. Let's actually do that trick so we can check if it's no is parented to no as well. Um, do local available error equal that. If not available, cannot attack character. Oh, yeah. Player cannot attack. Let's print the error and see why. On one attempt melee attack. Oh, let's actually just print here. Attack started. Well, true do run the attack once, wait that interval. If not, uh. Oh, oh, we need it the other way around. Okay. Um. Well, not. If not being held down, break. That's what I want. That one's for the server side. So when the server side asks, hey, uh, tell me when you release the key to uh, stop the ability from continuing. We run this one through a invert client. Well, actually, we can do a fire client and then the client fire server other way. But that one's for the server side. This one's for the client side where we just check it directly. Now, if I go and hold left click, so attack started, character is now attacking. And you can see if I'm holding left click, it keeps attacking. And then release. And it looks like this actually didn't. Attempt melee attack. Yeah, so we've we've got it so it's always if you release or start it. But what we want is this. If it's mouse button one and the state is begin. And actually we want that period, so let's do that. If it is does not if it does not equal to begin, we'll just pass. Uh, and we'll pass down here as well. If it's mouse one one there. Because we don't care if it ends or not here. We only need that for up here. So we can always do that beforehand. But if it's not ending... Oh, sorry. If it's not beginning a, like, ability or something, we'll just pass. If it is begin, then we're beginning something. So we'll check for mouse one one That's an attack. Um, so that should be right. 
might also swap to a B key line for block. So now I'm holding left click, so we're attacking. If I release, mouse point won't end. We're not attacking anymore. You can see here, character is now attacking. Oh, does it look like our check is working properly? So let's have a look at that. Attempt to melee combat. Can character attack? Local plate of character. Could not attack. Character isn't available. That's not working properly. Let's have a look at that. Oh, we're passing in local plate of character. Get state temporary character attacking. And you'll know what it is. Let's go over here to set state temporary. Let's set these to true. So could not attack, character is unavailable, could not attack, character is unavailable, could not attack, character is unavailable, and then we can attack again. So now we've got our debounce using these states. And also if we have a look at our character, if I have a look here at attributes by left click, we've got attack cooldown and attacking. So if I hold left click, you can see we are continuously attacking. Oh, it's not actually holding it. Do this. Hold left click and see attacking disappears and reappears. Um, except that for some reason ended early. So I'm holding my left click. I right click. Keeps attacking. Hey bro, good to see you back. If you got time, can you explain why do you change? I only, I mainly did that because when you use colon, it gives you the parent table to so this module table here as self, as the first argument for everything. Which actually, and also this prevented me from doing um, things like task.spawn. Because you can't do task.spawn colon set temporary state. You can't do that. You can only do it with dot. So that was actually another big thing that made me swap again. And because uh, colon has a lot of overhead, so that's why I swap back to dot, because colon goes through the uh, self table. And I I had to go through all my code and every, well, I didn't go through every project, but a lot of projects I did, I changed it back to dot. Attack duration, let's do 1.2 seconds, attack interval 2 seconds. And should we do like half a second? 0.6. And then what we can do is now the combat. So if we go client combat. Uh, let's go to... So here I'm going to release keybinds first and then do that as an extra thing. I'll key that there. Um, so what we want now is animations. I'm just going to get... Uh, we'll do like a combo thing. So I'll use these states to do a combo as well. So if I go to our avatar editor, actually, I think I do actually have animations I can use. Uh, combat anims. Let me see. see oh uh, we should have combat part two part one let's see what this is okay nothing uh, 
Oh, this is gonna suck. I'm testing this one. Mm, no. Is it this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've also swapped them to Dot as well. Because in the framework, I believe... Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't actually change it here, but I would do like a P call, for example. You could P call it and then do some other stuff with it. I just need to find combat A. Was that spook swords? Why is this not working? These are R15. Oh, there we are. Now it's working. B1. Oh, it probably selected one of these. I don't know. Oh, no. That's okay. Part one. Part two. P two. Uh, let's see. P three. Uh, I'm bad. Part three. Save. P three. I also do need to grab. I wish they had a right click and you could actually open. Let me see. Under my assets. Let me pull the, uh, the page for it so I can get the IDs. So here, what I'm going to do is go combat config. I'm going to do module animations. Uh, and then I need to go creations, I need to go to development items, animations, I'm looking for combat, P1, P2, and P3, copy asset ID, copy text asset ID, so slash, one, two, part one, part two, and part three. I don't know if you'll be able to use them if you are copying this. Those are the three animation IDs. Um. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change this so it's like a combo mechanism. So this is. Um. Uh, attack cut off time module dot cooldown time. Well, actually, let's do so. Debounce time is one. I better call it cooldown time. Cooldown time, cut off time, and uh, uh, attack duration is fine. So, how many seconds? For hits to register. Oh, how many seconds to allow hits to register? Uh, how many seconds max in between each press or combo? If R, if R, if over the time, pull down R. Uh, Start cooldown period. Cooldown time, actual cooldown duration. Should I do it that way? So you can't always spam left click. There's always a in between duration. Yeah, I'll do it that way. So then what I'll do is... Um... Let me 
and see. Let me actually close that because we don't need that right now. So attempt character attack, so we want combo increment. Um local current combo. We want to get state temporary. Uh, attack combo. Or we must find one combo. Actually, we'll do punch combo. Punch combo. We want current combo. Or one. We we'll set that to true. Um. We do want this one open now. I think it worth changing. <laughs> we change how it works when you change all the cooldown stuff relating to it. So how would this look like? Uh, you would have punch start when left click check interval return true or false very much. Okay, run melee attack. So here you want to do attack duration. You don't want to do cutoff time. So we'll wait attack duration plus a tiny delay. Um, that maybe if we do a hundred millisecond. No, that's 50. 50 missiles should be around. Um, so can attack. So here for can attack, we'll say... If they are currently attacking, no. If they're on cooldown, no. If they're stunned, no character is currently stunned. Let's just move that up here. It's not a little bit nice. So. Character is a big level. So we set attacking to true, which is going to be the attack duration, which we've got. The attack cooldown is not yet. Actually, technically, it will be the attack duration so we can't click until that attacks over but what we want is um above that we're going to get the current combo and we want the last attack last attack attack combo and then we want to set these again so last attack, uh, we want to do like, uh, we want the interval period, so we want combat config module, we want the cutoff time on both of the news. Current combo or one, this one's time. So last attack, that's our time value. So what we can say here is if uh, time minus last attack. Actually, let's do cut off time. So let's say if point combo is equal to the number of combat config uh, animations. So if it is doing the last animation now, else we're going to do something else. So that is has not finished combo, finished combo, still play the Play the last combo. Ah, oh, true. Um. Let 
yeah. That has not finished combo, so we want that one in there, but this is finished combo, so we want the cooldown period, cooldown time. So if current cover is that, or next cutoff. Next cut off, which is time plus that cut off time. That is when we expire, when this combo expires. So if we are, um, well, next cut off and time is larger than that cut off. So if we have finished the combo, or the cut off has occurred. Um, oh, and not, and that, no wait, no, fuck, I don't know what it is, um, so if we're at the end of the animation, three, we want to cool down, or if we've cut off, we want to cool down, no, if we're on the cut off, we want to reset the combo. Cool. How does that work though? No, that's not gonna work properly. Um, uh, <laughs> so if time is larger than the next cutoff, then else if it is a max combo, then else. Has not finished combo. Finished combo still play last attack. Cut off time resets. Oh, cut off time reset. So that would be set the attack cooldown to remaining duration which is the get temporary state of the next cutoff so that is our next cutoff minus time remaining duration math dots Max zero. Okay. So when we achieve the cutoff time reset, we don't allow them to attack. We extend the cooldown to add the missing cooldown duration period. Otherwise, if they've reached it, we play the combo, but the cooldown set to the reset. So here we actually return false cooldown period um attack cut off or oh, attack combo cut off occurred on cooldown and then these two are, are still successful attacks but they changed the attack duration so here next cut off is that one current combo ah uh, this current combo makes it Uh, set character combo that one, so reset combo. Actually, I can just set that to no. Reset the combo. And actually, I don't even need to do that there, I can just do that. And this attacking still has to occur at the top. No. No, it doesn't. That's only if we're attacking. <laughs> Combo cutoff. When cutoff is achieved, cooldown happens because you did not attack quick enough. That's remaining cooldown. 
just set that there. Oh, plus the total cooldown time. Because uh, it finished the attack. So we want the total cooldown time. Should I just have it as a... No, that would be stupid if I did that. Let me do it that way. That's better. So if our current time period is larger than the cutoff period, we do the attack cooldown. And we reset the combo. If our current combo is the length of that. Or if our com current combo plus one is the length of that. We do that and we still increment the combo. Current combo plus one. So we're predicting it early. Attacking state's true. Cutoff period is our current time plus that cutoff time. Yep, that should be good. That is one wild thing to do there. And then on the client, we say um, the same things. Maybe if I do uh, function module check combo cutoff character. Combo increment, combo cutoff. Like that. Uh, increment character combo. And then we can actually do this on the client as well because it's uh, not replicated. The Ken character attack, let's add this one at the bottom. Uh, combat config module that is require script dot parent. Uh, dot parent wake chart data wake chart combat config animations attack duration cooldown time cutoff time so here when we do this attack started run melee attack so before we run melee attack we'll increment the combo of the look player character when we run melee attack, we'll check with the server if we can attack. Oh, sorry, we'll check this first, see if our character can actually attack. Then we'll invoke the server, make sure we can attack, and then we are attacking now. So then we'll get to the current combo animation equals combat config module. And in this case, it would be at the combo, combo value. And combo value is the local player, no, we want character states. Where'd I put it? Uh, get temporary states. Current combo. I did set them. I do need to actually include that. Uh, one. Oh, what the fuck? At combo. Okay, I can just set that to zero. Um, set state temporary duration. Set state temporary. We don't need true there. That's what it was. Uh, combat client, we want the character state. Yeah, local character state module. Dots, uh, is it in services? Yes. Oh, it is. Services, character states, character states module. We're gonna get the combo. Get combo for one. Look at the character. We'll get that there. Um, combo animation. 
Equal animation and then play animation. Actually, let's convert index. So what we can do is uh, reload animations. So loaded combat animations. If animation track and players, and then we'll do this loaded one here. So let's grab this variable. Let's do local loaded combat animations table function module load combat animations for underscore animation ID in pairs blah. Do. Uh, also, let's reset the table. Table insert uh, the local player the character the humanoid. Let's actually put in a variable. Stop him. <laughs> it's him. Local humanoid equals local player character. And look at her character. Well, let's do it this way character and character find first child, which is a humanoid. If not humanoid, then return false. Oh, I will just return. And actually, I can put in here as well. Function module is character alive, character. We shall turn this, return humanoid and humanoid dot health is larger than zero. So he will say, if not character is alive, return false, character is not alive. And that simplifies that. And then also, since we have this one now, we can go up here. Is character alive? So if character alive base part dot parent, just insert that there like that, and then we can do the same thing here. Uh, if is character alive characters index, then plus equals one. Else we'll remove the current index, and that simplifies some code down. So he will say, if not combat shed module is character alive, character, then return. Actually, that doesn't even matter here because we need a humanoid variable. Uh, return here. So humanoid. And then object is instance of new. And actually, I can resolve this because I have a animation service. Local animation service. Local modules services animation service. I'm going to resolve animation value animation ID. And I'm going to load that. Uh, to insert that humanoid animator load animation and then. Uh, do I have a load load animation array? Here we go. Load animation array, humanoid animator. Animations would be those. That returns a table, so we can actually just do that. And that simplifies it a lot. Now if I'm not... Uh, I remember correctly. Uh, if I do that, that, or that, there we go, and that loads that in that one function, 
And then all I need to do is on character added, we run that. Look player character added connect load combat animation. So as I said, the reason why I swap back to a dot is because I can do that. And I can also do task of spawn load animations local player character. And I can do these one liners now, which make it a lot neater. So that is animations done. I do want sound, so let me um Let me see if there's any sounds. Punch. We can use that on hit punch hit or combat hit. So that one as well, punch swing. Um, reduce the sound a bit. Like that. Punch swing, combat hits. So let's make a folder for sounds. And I'll bring them to in here. And then what we can do is uh, play. So that's going to be done on the server, but what we want the server to do is to play that sound. Um, so let's do uh, our created assets. Let's get that to variable. Replicate storage right for shop assets. And then we want uh, replicate assets, sounds, combat. Oh no, we want punch swing. Clone. Do I have a sounds? Don't. Sound service or lure. Let's make a quick module for this. Turn module. Function module play sound at position. Uh, sound position. Sound equals sound clone. And then here we want an attachment. Uh, oh, just an attachment. This is what we need attachment. Attachment dot name equals sound. Uh, Sound point, uh, world per, or world keyframe equals keyframe, dot new position, the parent is always based on terrain, uh, sound dot parent equals that, sound play, so that is a sound, that is a vector for you. And also I'm going to return the sounds. Duration is a number, question mark. Turn sounds, sound. So here we'll say if duration then debris, add item, attachment, duration. So let's make sure we can't fuck this up. If type duration is equal to number. Like that. So wrong. I hate this. <laughs> They're all separated and shit. Oh fuck it, I'll just keep in this world for readability. Then what we'll do is sound service. Oops. Sound service dot. Oh, that's not what I want. Sound service. 
is the sound service module. Sound service module dot play sound up position. Local swing sounds is that. So we'll do swing sounds at the character get pivot dot position with the given duration, which would be the that's a sound, so that would be a uh, time length, yeah. And we'll, that's a variable, but we don't really give a shit about that. Uh, we'll do that. Or maybe we should do... Actually, I'm going to keep it that way in, in here. Play sound at duration will automatically add that. And that would be the sound time length. And also we want to do that after we're doing it. That's, there we go. So we'll get the punch swing sound in there. And then we want the hitbox here, and then here we want also the um, stun, and we want the combat punch hit. So that punch hit. Punch hit sound. Stun. Uh, plus disabled rhythm. And then visual effects. Uh, surface. What's it called? Surface or uh, selection box? Selection box. Like that. Um. Okay. But if we try this now, we should get some sound. Let's see line 38 combat client. Whoops, our animation service. So if I left click, attack begin, line 76. Increment character combo that is meant to be in the combat shared module. Actually, let me move that as well. Can attack, invoke server. Maybe I don't need to do on the client. Um. Let me just check how this works. Uh, invoke server. Attempt character attack. Do we increment combo before we return? Yes, we do. Okay. But in that case, that will always be correct. We don't actually need to do the increment on the client. Uh, what's the error there? Attack begin, all in nil value, 46 on the server. That is shared. Make character combo. Actually, we can move this back now to here. Module increment character combo. Left click, 
snow and number 46. If next cut off and time is larger than next cut off. Hey, maybe the duration. Oh, I don't add the duration. Right. So next cutoff, we need to actually also um time plus cutoff time plus the actual attack duration. Because we do it immediately and we don't delay it. Actually, let's task up delay. Attack duration. Ah, uh, debris did. I believe I had a debris for it, right? Yeah, debris does it. Ah, uh, cutoff time. So, attack duration. Time plus cutoff time. Like that. If I'm holding that to how oh, plus one is that? Oh, I got rid of the return tree. Oh no, that is it. Increment beforehand. No, that is increment. Oh, there we go. I get it. That's working. We have a look at our character here. When it's one, it doesn't actually show it. Let me put this. Oh, because I put plus one there. Okay. Wait, no, that is correct. Uh, attack combo. I do want it to display it before this. So let me just... I'm just gonna do this here so it's immediately updating. I don't have to see this. Toss it in here. That's the actual cutoff time that we don't worry about. That's what I was causing the issue to.
Ah, uh, I don't use temporary. Get states, attack combo, set state, attack combo, set state, attack combo. That makes things a little bit easier. Set state, current combo, get state. If not, then set state one equals one. Well, actually, it would be zero in this case. If combo is the length of that, or would it be one? No, it would be one. Yeah, and then I do task with delay the attack duration function the compare one is that uh That is the length of it. Let's read this again. So next cut off, get the next point where it cuts it off. Get the current combo. If there is no combo, set it to one. Set that to one. If next cut off exists and the time is larger than next cut off, set the cooldown to large. Set the combo to one. 